Well, good. We're live streaming now, so welcome to Grace Bible Church. It's October 8th. This is the PM session, PM message. Please open your Bibles to Judges. I want to have a three-verse scripture reading tonight out of Judges chapter 2. This was back in the day when Moses was um, now dead and Joshua took over as leader. And Joshua led the children into the Promised Land. And they conquered city after city. And all these different nations were destroyed. And God's people took up that habitat and that, those areas. And all that established <coughs> orchards and farmland, all that was the, God's people. And, but there were some that he didn't drive out. There were some of the enemies that God left. And it says in verse 21 of Judges chapter 2, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. There's, Joshua didn't drive them all out. That through them, verse 22, I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep or not. Some of their daddies didn't keep it. Some did. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. God purposed that there would be some enemies left in the promised land around his people to prove his people. And just like our lives now, you think, well, there's things that I don't like in my life. There's things that are annoying. Uh, health conditions or issues that I just want to be done with. No, 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 no. They're to prove you. They're to, to show you to rest on the Lord. And that there's really no peace and comfort in this life. It's all in the Lord alone. It's to prove whether you really are resting in God or you're looking to your own, your own light. And that's what we so desperately need to know before we die out of this world. So may it be you're given to see your enemies as a blessing to see your hardships and losses as blessings, and you worship the Father as they come your way. Well, let me turn it over to Rick for the evening message. Thank you. Evening, everybody. I turn to uh, Isaiah 38. And I'm going to read this chapter. And then I'm going to read a parallel or similar chapter from 2 Kings. They have, uh, like with Matthew and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're different perspectives on uh, the same event and it's some interesting uh, distinctions between the two of them, both giving some uh, added depth to what's going on here. But in Isaiah 38, let me begin in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned at ten degrees, by which the degrees it was gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. 
Okay, now he said, now nah, this is the right. This is what his guy had to say about it. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a, weaver's, uh, like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness from day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion so he will break all my bones. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow so, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. My eyes fail with looking upward. O oh Lord, I'm oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He has both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me, and make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for tr thy truth. For the living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. For Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I, shall, that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Okay, now if you would, turn to 2 Kings chapter 20. Same story, different page. Beginning, it's a shorter read. First 11 verses, beginning in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amoz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So far, a very similar story. Verse 4, And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up unto the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do a thing that he has spoken. Shall the, shadow, shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go backward ten degrees? That's the shadow on the sundial. And Hezekiah answered, Well, that's a light thing for the shadow to go, go down ten degrees, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. And that's the end as, as it relates to this. Quite an amazing event. And that fact, that's kind of what caught my attention just in, in reading Scripture. I thought, this, this is an amazing miracle. Uh, uh, it's only done one other time in the Scripture when, uh, when Joshua was, was fighting uh, the enemies of, of uh, the Lord. And, and uh, Joshua pr prayed that the sun would stand still in the sky and it stood still for about a day so that they could defeat their enemies but this is actually going backwards that's even uh, I, they're both phenomenal but it's certainly a, it, it, it caught my attention now, a couple things I want to say at the outset the well, important thing I think um, I see in this and I have my prayer about this tonight with the, that I don't get in the way because I think this is a, an incredible story 
and I just was my prayer all along was that you know that uh, that uh, the same prayer of John the Baptist you know that John the Baptist said uh, they, they, they came up to me and they said you know everybody's going to see Jesus and, he, and instead of you and he said that's okay I, I must decrease and he must increase and I was just that's just been my prayer about this tonight that you know that I would decrease and that he would increase in this message so I pray that that comes to come to, to be true um, first thing as far as this story here um, uh, some people those who don't know the gospel at all uh, would say that Hezekiah is uh, is bragging on his life and, and praying for 15 you know, so extra years because he's been good and uh, nothing could be more wrong than that. He's, uh, even, it, it reads, um, as I was reading to you earlier, it says, Remember now I've walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart and so forth. That was my first tip-off that this thing is, is prophetic of the Christ of Christ Jesus. Uh, that, uh, you know, the Old Testament, is, it says in the New Testament, there are types and shadows and pictures of Christ to come. And uh, this was my first tip-off that uh, there's something in this story is descriptive of Christ and I, I, I meditated and mused on it for some period of time and I, I see that you know the truth of the story is is really it's is in the work of Christ to come and I want to make some parallels between what's going on here and what what happened with Jesus and, and what it means for us so first point I would make is that like like Hezekiah <laughs> uh, Jesus is the captain of his people we saw that in 2nd Kings verse 5 you might want to keep your finger on both versions because I'm going to go back and forth. Um, uh, uh, Isaiah is told, uh, tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. So this, we see uh, Hezekiah is a picture of Jesus Christ and, and because in Hebrews 2 and verse 10, you don't need to turn there, but it says it became him, speaking of Jesus, by whom are all things and by whom uh, and it, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And so Jesus is, all, is, is, is our captain, uh, the captain of our salvation, it says. Uh, and so here we see Hezekiah in type like Jesus, the captain of his people. The second point I'd say is like Hezekiah, Jesus faced death as a young man. You can see in verse of Isaiah, the Isaiah version. He says, I'm deprived of the residue of my years. Now, um, Manasseh isn't born, who is Hezekiah's son, and, and basically Hezekiah dies at age 54. So going back, he's somewhere in his 30s here when, he, when he's facing this, this, uh, the, this death, that uh, uh, staring death in the face, if you want to put it that way. And in verse 12, he said, My age is departed. It's removed from me as a shepherd's tent. Just like a tent, just folded up. It's, this is it. The show's over. The show's over for, for Hezekiah. So Jesus faced death as well as a young man. Uh, not uh, living out the fullness of, of, his, of his years. And going to that cross to, uh, to, uh, to die uh, on behalf of sinners. Uh, the third point I'd make... And I, I made this earlier, though, that, that you know the, the big tip-off that this is a type in the shadow. Jesus is, is certainly the only one who can stand before God and say, I've walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Now later on, so just to prove that, if you look at Isaiah in verse 17, Hezekiah knows he's a sinner. <laughs> he, he says, Thou hast in love to my soul, delivered, from the, uh, delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you've cast all my sins behind thy back. But uh, the Christ that we worship, sinless, walking before the Father in truth and a perfect heart. So we see the, the, the type and the shadow. Uh, the fourth point I would make is that like Hezekiah, Jesus, in effect, fought this battle alone. And I'm, I'm taking that verse where, where Hezekiah, he went, his face was to the wall. It's kind of a separating. And this is something he's facing with God between he and him uh, between the father and him alone and um, we know that Jesus when he went to the garden of Gethsemane he sweated tr uh, dr uh, drops of, uh, of blood as, as sweat as if it were drops of blood the full weight of, of uh, the wrath of God he saw coming and, and he, uh, he, he faced that alone he faced that alone in the garden of Gethsemane he faced that alone all the way up to the cross because all that followed him ran that ran from what, what they knew was coming. And so Hezekiah, uh, like that, 
uh, in turning his face to the wall, the implication is uh, uh, he wasn't, it was just, he was cutting off other communications. It was between him and he alone and God was, and he was praying because God said, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. He faced that wall and he, he took his petition to the Father, like Jesus in the garden. And like Hezekiah, God heard Jesus' prayer. And like Hezekiah, God heard his prayers. Sixth or seventh point, I'm losing track. But like Hezekiah, God answered Jesus' prayer by doing something overwhelming and mind-blowing. Something the world would never be able to ignore. The sun going back 10 degrees, never been done since, never was done before. And it was a, a, a once in e an eternity event. And, uh, and he, he turned back that clock. He, even today, if you, uh, if you Google it, you'll find that, uh, I don't know if this is true, I'm certainly not a scientist, but the scientists, when they're trying to reckon up time and things that have happened, uh, they reckon the Joshua event of the sun standing still and the Hezekiah event of the sun going back in terms of the way we keep track of time today. And, and I don't know if that's true or not, but you can certainly there's certainly that's uh, uh, things that you can read or people who make that who make that uh, uh, assertion. So God was going did something so overwhelming and so mind, mind blowing and amazing the world would never be able to ignore it. That was going to be to raise Jesus up out of that grave for the the world to see. He was uh, uh, he was going to resurrect, and he was going to resurrect on the on that third day. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, in fact, if you if you look uh, in 2 Kings, verse 5, this is, it only shows in 2 Kings. It doesn't show in Isaiah. But he says to Hezekiah, I'll heal thee. And on that third day, you're going to go up into the house of the Lord. Again, speaking of Christ's resurrection, on the third day after his death, he rose again, showing that, he, that his sacrifice was accepted, his sacrifice for sinners was accepted before the Father, that sin couldn't hold him in hell, and that he rose again for, uh, for our justification, as it says in the Scripture. So, again, we see it here in, in this story of Hezekiah, the, a type of Christ or a shadow, a foreshadowing of the Christ to come. Next point I would make is that like Hezekiah, Jesus' death wasn't for himself alone. If you look in verse uh, Isaiah verse 6, the Isaiah version there, uh, the verse 6 of Isaiah 38, God says to Isaiah, I'm going to deliver thee and this city and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria and I'll defend this city. That Hezekiah's healing didn't just affect him, it affected those people. And so it was with Christ Jesus that his resurrection wasn't, his death and burial and resurrection wasn't for him alone. It was for all those that God had designated before eternity, elected as it says in Ephesians, elected from the foundation of the world. They were all part and parcel of the of uh, the arrangement between the Father and the Son. I'm, I, he came to die for them. Uh, he came to seek and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel and th that is exactly what he did and so his his deliverance his resurrection it wasn't for him alone but for the entirety of his people uh, those that uh, chosen before the foundation of the world and what are they being delivered from and Isaiah verse 17 says it says it this way uh, Hezekiah says thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. You've cast all my sins behind thy back. That for the believers, uh, that death of Christ, that substitution, in, that death in substitution for them, uh, delivered them from all their sins. They're all behind the back. Not to be remembered again as far as the east is from the west. So we see that like Hezekiah, Jesus' death was deliverance and defense for his people. And uh, that their sins would be remembered no, mo no more before God the Father. Judgment has been meted out on the Son. The next point is, uh, for Hezekiah and for all of us today, we see in this gospel story of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, we see our hope in verse 16 of Isaiah, the Isaiah edition. Isaiah, Hezekiah put it this way, O Lord, by these things men live. This hope in the gospel, in the resurrection, this hope in the in the uh, uh, 
that he would raise again on the third day by this is this is life and in all these things is the life of my spirit said Hezekiah you will recover me and make me live when he resurrected we resurrected and uh, and this this story and type and shadow of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ Jesus is, is our hope is by that hope in Christ uh, death on the behalf of the people that we live and uh, it's, it's the Spirit of God imparted the life to the believer and thus we are recovered we're recovered so I thought to myself you know if you, if um, so if you stand in need of recovery if you stand in need of deliverance if you stand in need of defense call upon the Savior because that's what this story talks about in foreshadow of the of the Christ Jesus to come he is mighty to save and not only so and this is <laughs> this is the other thing that kind of blew my mind that uh, God turns back the hand of time and he does it in the life of every believer turn to Job chapter 33 I think he does it oftentimes with them turns back the hand of time in your life in the life of those that are called out by the gospel preaching in Job 33 and verse 20 beginning in verse 23 uh, Job uh, is talking here about the gospel message and in verse 23 he says if there be a messenger that's a preacher with him an interpreter one among a thousand to show man Christ's uprightness his uprightness then the father is gracious unto him and says deliver him from going down to the pit that pit of corruption that Hezekiah talked about I found a ransom that's Christ Jesus and substitutionary death he says his flesh that's the believers flesh shall be fresher than a child's he shall return to the days of his youth there is a in the working of God in a believer there is a refreshing in their life when the spirit takes up residence the world is new the world is it's different it's fresh his flesh is fresher than a child uh, he shall return to the days of youth he shall pray unto the God and he will be favorable unto him and he, he shall see his face his father's face with joy for he will render unto man Christ's righteousness and so there's this beautiful thing uh, that God does in turning back the hands of time for the believer turn to uh, Joel chapter 2 somewhat similar story but I, I, I want to put it to a different different set of life facts and Joel chapter 2 beginning in verse 23 says uh, be glad then ye children of Zion rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month and the floors the floors that's uh, the barn the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil and he will and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God for he's dealt wonder wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and I was just thinking and, and throughout our life we get ourselves we go down I don't know we'll call blind alleys we go we, we go off the beaten path we wander from good counsel in the gospel and how often do we have to be brought back and how often do we go through this where he restores the, 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 the years that the locust has eaten that the 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 effects of, of decisions that uh, 
we make that uh, that end up hurting us and, 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 and causing pain. And yet, this God constantly, can, He can turn back the time. He can turn back the time. He can restore the difficulties. He can restore the damage done. He, he, he constantly is restoring and refreshing His people. And we, have, we can have great confidence and hope in Him that no matter where, we, where it is, what's going on in our life, we, there's a constant do-over for believers where He will restore. Uh, it's like a metaphor in our life. You know, how often would we like to say, I'd like to turn back the clock on that one. But only in Christ Jesus is that turning back possible. It's only in Christ Jesus that, that, that we can, our fresh can be remade, fresher than a child, certainly in salvation, and then throughout our life as He refreshes us and undoes the damage of so much that we do to comfort us and to strengthen us that we can carry on and keep on keeping on. It says a just man falls seven times and he gets back up. And when he gets back up, he's refreshed and renewed for the battle. So no matter where you are, where I am, where we are, what we've experienced, all of our mistakes, our errors, our crimes, there's this great hope that in the work of Christ Jesus, all will be well. We, and not <laughs> based solely on that's His work, that perfect work of His on the, Christ, uh, on the cross for our benefit. So I can say certainly and, and tell you that this salvation is of the Lord. Our hope is of the Lord. Jesus fought this battle alone on the behalf of His people as we saw it in Hezekiah. His deliverance for us is in the gospel message preached. Hear Him out. Ask for understanding and enlightenment that He doesn't pass you by. As it says in Isaiah 15, if you want to turn back there with regard to all of this. Hezekiah said, What shall I say with regard to what God had done for Hezekiah? He said, He has both spoken unto me and himself has done it. It wasn't like earlier, Oh, you see my perfect heart, Lord? No, 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 no. This was himself. This is the work of the Lord in the life of a believer, strengthening and encouraging him in the battle. And... Uh, that work of salvation, we add nothing to it, but benefit eternally from it, both in deliverance and defense. And may it be that for you and for each and every one listening to this, that your sins be cast behind His back. And that refreshing, that deliverance, and that defense be of the Lord your God. Uh, and may all praise and glory and honor be to Him. Pastor Chuck, would you close us in a word of prayer?